It's the After Show with Telecom TV's Guy Daniels and Ray LaMatra. Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content. Yes, you might have been expecting the after show, but after such an arduous week, we thought it was far more appropriate to bring you our very first post-event hangover show, complete with some Barcelona hot chocolate and a churros or two. You know the feeling, the day after a trade show, early taxi to the airport, strong coffee, bottles of water, severely dehydrated, flight delays, cancellations, all you want to do is get home. Well, you don't need to be at a physical event to experience those symptoms. But luckily, I've got my friend and colleague, Ray Lemaitre, Editorial Director at Telecom TV, to share the pain. He's there somewhere. What a week, eh, Ray? Uh, what? What day is it? Has the alarm gone off yet? Uh, hold on. I think my... I think the Alka Seltzer's ready there. Um... Yeah, that Rioja was a bit heavy, yeah. Heavy, but really, really nice. Well, look, coming up now, we've got some special bonus treats for you. Items that didn't quite make it into our four days of back-to-back -back programs as part of our Spotlight on 5G week. Plus, we'll recap some of the highlights and reflect on the major news headlines. Well, we started our week with a deep dive on 5G Core, the first of four themed days. Yeah, and it began with a keynote interview with George Nazi of Google Cloud, where we asked him why 5G standalone core deployments were so important for telco service strategy. And our roundtable discussion looked at the deployment and management issues of the new 5G Core when implemented alongside the existing EPC. We also talked about the best ways to create new services that use capabilities such as slicing and how operators can maximise their investments. Yeah, it must be abundantly clear right now that the core platform is the pulsing brain, and we've all got a pulsing brain at the moment, that helps operators put their 5G service plans into action. Uh, the core is what will help operators execute their plans uh, and it's also clear that operators are quite willing to mix things up in terms of where they saw, source their core capabilities, including making it a multi-vendor affair. And of course, that was all a couple of days before AT&T dropped its 5G core outsourcing bombshell. But we'll get to that a bit later. Ooh, uh, what is that? Can I smell churros? Oh, oh you mean these? Uh, yes. Oh, the they're very tasty. I don't think they're very good for you, but um, oh, just perfect for today. Now, as part of our new program, The Slice, which has been delivering a slice of daily news and analysis week, this week, we've been running the Great Tapas Taste Off, where Ray and I pitted our culinary skills against each other to go head to head with a different tapas dish each day. Our audience decided on the winners, and here they are. Just finishing my, my churros there, very nice. Uh, yes, the winning four tapas, Iberico ham, calamari, padron peppers, and I've got to say surprisingly, croquetas. I was sure the patatas bravas would have won. I've submitted some papers to the High Court and I, I'm expecting a positive response to my request for a recount because I'm sorry, but bravas, come on. <laughs> Hey, it's not counting for taste. But really, what do we know about tapas? We need an expert. So we sent our crew along to Ayo Blanco, the regular venue for Telecom TV's post MWC team meal, and one or two glasses of wine. We wanted to see how a real Barcelona tapas favorite was prepared. Hola, mi nombre es Fernando Delgado, chef de Ajo Blanco, Tapas and Cocktail aquí en Barcelona y os damos la bienvenida. Os vamos a preparar nuestras bravas especiales y particulares un poquito picantes. Es una salsa de cocción muy lenta, lleva 48 horas de cocción. 
Primero cocinamos cebolla, cebolla roja 24 horas, luego le agregamos tomate con las especias y el picante y cocinamos 24 horas más. De especias lleva bueno, la típica guindilla, pimienta rosa, anís estrellado, clavo de olor, bayas de nebro y pindilla ojo de pájaro. No, no hay una receta única de, de salsa brava. Es... Cada lugar le pone lo suyo. En muchos lugares le mezclan ya el alioli con la, con la salsa. Eh, nosotros lo ponemos separado. Pero bueno, lo más importante es que tienen que picar, ¿no? Por eso son bravas. Para empezar, usamos la patata con piel. Es un tipo de patata muy melosa. Se corta en dados irregulares. Ahora lo que vamos a hacer es confitar la patata. La confitamos en aceite de oliva a temperatura baja para que queden melosas. Esto lleva unos 10-15 minutos. Nuestras patatas tienen la particularidad de llevar también boniato. Lleva boniato asado, entonces hacemos lo mismo, pero lo hacemos a rodajas el boniato porque lo hacemos al horno. Una vez que las metemos al horno 20-25 minutos, eh, lo que obtenemos es esto, el boniato cocido. El boniato también, una vez que las patatas estén confitadas, lo freiremos junto con la patata. Bueno, aquí ya están las patatas confitadas, blanditas, la piel un poco arrugada. Esta piel luego quedará, quedará crujiente. Ahora vamos a mezclar los, los boniatos con la patata y freírlos, darle el golpe fuerte de fritura para que queden crujientes. Con el aceite bien fuerte. Siempre un poco de sal. Y aquí es cuando le echamos la salsa. Una vez que... una salsa tipo mermelada y por último una buena cucharada de alioli por encima Our thanks to the staff of Ayo Blanco for helping out there. And we'll be back there next year. Just save us our regular table at the back. And sorry for the mess. Uh, so maybe I might have won it if I'd had those patatas bravas. Well, we're going to have to up our game next year, I think, now that we've seen how it's done properly. Tuesday saw our coverage move along to the 5G RAN. Yes, and our, our keynote interview was with Tarek Amin, Group CTO for Rakuten Mobile. Uh, he gave me an update on where Rakuten Mobile is with its network rollout in Japan and how its approach to mobile network infrastructure will influence next-gen network developments around the world. And he's obviously and absolutely convinced it will. Uh, our roundtable discussion then asked if network operators are ready to throw their budgets, strategies and futures behind virtualized, cloud-oriented and even open radio access network architectures. Yes, the Strategy Outlook program on 5G RAN was a great one. I mean, they all were, but that one in particular was, was excellent. So if you haven't yet watched it, recommend you do so. And as if a daily tapas treat wasn't enough, we've been spoiling you with our series on Spanish wine. After all, do you know what you're drinking at MWC? Do you wish you had more local knowledge? Uh, when it comes to wine, Telecom TV is more than happy to help with the expert assistance of Pierre Mansour, director of wine at one of the world's longest running wine cooperatives, the Wine Society. Yes, Pierre took us through four different regions each day as part of the after show, and we've got the empty bottles to prove it. But what if you want to explore further afield and try something new?
So I think there's a there's a number of things. I would uh, I think the the grape Menthia is really exciting. This is a red grape grown in Galicia, um, where Albarino is grown, and that's making some really exciting, quite refined, um, pure styles of of red wine. So I'd look out for Menthia. Down in the south of Spain, Monastrel um, grape variety is making some really lovely, big, powerful sort of blockbuster styles of red wine down in, around Valencia, Alicante. Jumea is an area where, which has some of the most amazing, quite arid vineyards of, of Monastrel. Um, then two other areas from a fine wine perspective that are really worth checking out are um, Ribera del Duero, um, which is, um, I guess, one of the newer fine wine parts of, of Spain, which is really shaking up the scene. Uh, also grows Tempranillo, makes fantastically intense expressions of Tempranillo. And the second region, um, again, not far from Barcelona, actually, in Catalonia, is Priorat which makes these superb, quite sort of rustic, complex Mediterranean blends of Garnacha, Syrah and, and Carignan. A huge thanks to Pierre and all the team at the Wine Society. Terrific wine choices this week. And the full-length interview with Pierre is available to watch here on Telecom TV, where you can discover even more about Spanish wine. Well, Wednesday brought us to the 5G edge. It did indeed, wherever that might be. Uh, we started with our keynote interview with Andrea Donner, who is Chief Network Officer for Vodafone UK, and asked what 5G edge means to Vodafone in terms of mech assets and whether those assets belong to Vodafone or those of its partners. And he also gave us an interesting glimpse of the future as disaggregation continues to gather pace. Our roundtable discussion then considered the strategic choices facing telcos as they look to realise the commercial opportunities of 5G and Edge, what the optimum Edge scenarios are, and if that combination of 5G and Edge really is the formula for success. And if we've learnt anything this week, it's that enterprises are increasingly keen to explore the potential of Edge-based services, often combined with 5G connectivity and that network operators need to base their edge and virtualization strategies based on how the same resources can be used to meet their own needs, as well as adopt third-party applications to meet the needs of those enterprise users. It shouldn't be one or the other. Well, as well as sampling the delights of Spanish wine, the After Show series this week also included photos of past MWCs sent in by our viewers, as well as a sprinkling of our own. We just couldn't resist. So here's a few final images that we received in the past 24 hours. Well, that's the uh, interior of the old venue when the um, event was in Cannes. And of course, that's Martin Warwick, our long-term editorial colleague. I have absolutely no idea what he's eating, but it's, it's, it's something somewhere in Barcelona. Oh, and a grainy shot of uh, one of our event studios there. And I think that was when it was all sponsored by Inc. If you remember Inc, the Hutchison-backed handset vendor. Now that looks like uh, uh, is that before HP went stratospheric with its uh, with its booth with its stand? Yeah, always nice and bright though. You've got to say you can't miss it. The old HP stand. Oh yes. That's, uh, oh, is that what it's like when you're going home or getting up? I can't remember. Uh, one of the two. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, oh, yes. <laughs> A wardrobe clash never to be forgotten. <laughs> dear, oh, dear. Uh, I've, I've got my suspicions were... who sent that one in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember that photo being taken. <laughs> Delete, delete, move on, <laughs> move on, play the tape, do anything else, <laughs> move off the photograph at once. 
3GSM TV broadcasting well throughout 3GSM World Congress. Indeed, the entire duration of the show, we're on the air from our studio in Hall 7. Please feel free to come and pay us a visit. We're sort of at the top of Hall 7, right at the back. It's the content pavilion on the right, halfway up the hill towards the National Pavilion at the end of the boulevard. Oh, this has, uh, yes, uh, a few shots of some of our parties down the years. Beer, wine, popcorn. I'm assuming this is the Mobile Planet launch. It's got to be the Mobile Planet launch. More beer. He looks very grateful. Cheers. Packed party. Oh, Dickie Boat. Martin, always working. The rest of us partying. He's doing an interview on stage. Professionalism. Uh, uh, yeah, there's always one crew member who you know, doesn't get to join the party. Crikey. You'll hear a brief message from me, and then you can leave us a message, anything you like, but please keep it clean. Spinvox then converts your message to text, and it appears live at the bottom of our screen. Spinvox? <laughs> Surely not. Oh dear. If anyone's watched our well, top ten mobile moment series, <laughs> that's that's right. Something was converting the messages. Maybe not Spinvox. <laughs> oh, and whatever you do, don't ring that number, please. <laughs> yeah, I've got no idea what that connects you to anymore. Oh well, we had so much fun with uh, three GSM TV and then launching Mobile World TV. Right, uh, Event TV then was uh, was so different. Uh, and well done to our colleague Simon Wall for bringing those big screen TV trucks to Barcelona. What an impact they had when they first appeared. So our fourth and final day. Yay, finally. So has reached the 5G cloud. Quite the topic of the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And we started with a, a keynote interview with Neil McRae, Chief Architect for BT. Uh, I asked him about BT's network cloud. Uh, BT has taken a very pragmatic approach, building out its cloud nodes and taking resources closer to the customers as needed. And it looks well placed to be able to extend and expand its resources and services portfolio to support its own operations and the evolving needs of enterprises. Also, as more network operators put their faith in the public cloud partners, our roundtable discussion considered if telcos are ready to move on from private cloud architectures to further their 5G ambitions. And talking of cloud, the biggest news this week, of course, if not the year, came on Wednesday evening from AT&T. Yes, it was an absolute whopper with AT&T outsourcing its 5G core to Microsoft Azure in a move that included the sale of its network cloud technology to the public cloud giant and a hint at plans to take that tech to the global operator community. Uh, one for the public cloud champions to chew over for sure. Yeah, and for those that think uh, the cloud arrived at MWC only this year, and you could be forgiven for thinking so, given the amount of hype and marketing some were generating there, uh, think again. We've got a clip from way, way back when our editorial colleague Ian Scales uh, proved that telecoms has been wrestling with the cloud for a good few years cloud is, right? So if we're looking at cloud as the next XAAS service of the month, whatever that is, then clearly the, you need to look at the economics of that. You need to understand who your competition is and you need to understand where you can play to your strengths, right? But if you also look at cloud as fundamentally a transformational journey that allows you to reduce your economics, allows you to more effectively use the capacity of the network, allows you to get green benefits, time to market benefits, there are a host of other advantages that are offered to a service provider without them attempting to go boil the ocean and try to take on this big amorphous cloud market with, you know, Know, you know, ruthless ambition, so to speak. So I think that there's there's kind of, you know, we have to be careful when we talk about cloud because there's so many different definitions of cloud within oh, the space and today. which way you're, you're <laughs> looking at, um, you know, I think I think is pretty important to consider. I mean, yes, the, the terminology may have changed, but this has been a hot topic in telecom circles for more than a decade. And yet still there is often a lack of joined up thinking about the relationship between the cloud and the wide area network infrastructure. 
The cloud, after all, is just a series of compute islands without the networks. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that event almost made our top 10 mobile moments series, but finished up at number 11, just outside the charts. And if you haven't watched any of the series yet, you should. History with a little slice of fun. Yeah, we had a hard job selecting the top 10. There's, there's still rooms full of videotapes that need to be digitized. And I know there's some great footage still to come. We mainly focus on the period of about 2004 to 2014. Two reasons, the oldest footage always generates the most interest because we've tend to forgotten what happened way back then. I certainly have. Uh, and also because it was a period when we were producing the event TV for the GSMA. So we were recording a lot more content than we normally do with Telecom TV and also a far broader range of content. And I've just got to thank Mike Short, a former GSMA chairman, of course, who has already emailed in and suggested more topics for us to cover. So we're going to have to do this again next year. Well, I look forward to seeing more. I just hope I'm not in any of them, especially when I had that mullet. And there's more. There's plenty of other content available to watch. Lots of supporting interviews and technology deep dives. It's all there on the site. Help yourself. Yeah, it's been a great week of fantastic conversations, insights and lots of laughs. Well, it only remains for us to thank the team at Telecom TV. This has been a monumental effort. And a special thank you to all our sponsors as well for, for sharing our vision for Spotlight on 5G and backing us. And thanks to our guests, all of them. There were so many. Yeah, there really were. And we also want to thank you, our viewers. Uh, let us know what you thought of our programmes. And we'll be back, of course. Uh, we still have the Open RAN Summit and the Cloud Native Telco Summit later this year. Plus, of course, our annual Great Telco event. Will we be meeting in person? Let's wait and see, and hope so. Let's hope so too. But for now, Ray, it's time to uh, finish this hot chocolate, which has uh, gone decidedly cold. Switch off the lights and get back home. Yep, just don't wake me up before you go-go. Goodbye. <laughs>